Hi everyone, this is Luana Lamas with Arbor Real Estate Group in League City, Texas, right outside of Houston. And like always, I'm in the car, so I thought I would come to you with another real estate road trip. And today I wanna to talk to you about home pricing and what is going on in the market. I know there is a lot of buzz about interest rates and prices and it not being a seller's market anymore. And it's so funny how many non-real estate related professionals, I'll be nice, think they know what's going on in the market when they don't have an idea of what's going on in the market. I feel like news people get paid more when they have subjects that scare us. Subjects that make us freak out, the headlines that are like, ah, those are the ones that get the most views and those are the ones they care about and they don't care how true they are. So I wanted to come to you from a real estate professional's point of view to tell you what's really going on in our market. I can't speak for all the markets nationwide. I can't even speak for all the markets here in Texas, but in League City, in my area, Galveston County, some of Harris County, some of Brazoria County, I will say that the world is not on fire. It's okay. People are still buying and selling houses every day. But let's talk about pricing. In my opinion, the prices have been insane the last, I don't know, 18 months. I mean, since COVID really, just everything changed and there was a supply and demand issue and we just couldn't keep houses on the market. If, if a house went on the market under, I'm gonna say 300. If a house went on the market under 300,000, we had 30 offers on it within the first weekend. If it was under 500, then we probably had 20 offers on it within the first weekend and so on and so forth. As you get up to the 750 to 1 million price point in our neck of the woods, that's not the norm. So it's a very niche market. So I can't speak for their averages very much, but for the averages with the clients that I work for, I will say that we had between 20 and 30 offers every weekend we had a house on the market. And it was kind of in, in, a, in a good way, the sellers got to do less to prepare their house. You know, they knew their house was gonna sell. So normally my sellers, I kind of ask them to do a lot of cleaning, maybe staging, maybe painting, touch up, repairs. We just wanna put the best product on the market so that we can get top dollar. But the truth of the matter is they were gonna get top dollar no matter what kind of product they put on the market. And they knew it. So even if I asked them to do stuff, you know, they just wouldn't do it anyway they'd still get multiple offers and people still wanted their house because it was the only house that they could afford. There just wasn't a lot of houses there. Are, sorry, that was bad grammar. There were not a lot of houses underneath that 300,000 mark in our market. So what happened was, well, for me, I'm going to give you a very specific case. I had a house listed at 250. I felt like the house should have been listed at 225. Now, it would have been listed at 225 under normal circumstances, but as I just said, the last 18 months have not been normal. So I pulled up all the recent sales, all the houses that were still active, all the ones that were pending, and all the ones that had sold in the last three months, last six months, and last year. And everything that I pulled supported a sales price of maybe 225. So I went over that with the homeowner, <clears throat> with the seller, and I also looked at the percentage that houses were selling over the asking price. For instance, if a house is priced at 300,000 and it's being sold for 110% of sales price, that means it was being sold for 330,000, even though it was priced at 300,000. Whenever you get 30 offers on a house, People get a little aggressive, you know, at that point it's like an auction and they just want the house. And so they offer 10% over, hypothetically. So that house sold for 330, even though it was priced at 300. So I looked at those statistics for this specific house that I felt should have been priced at 225. And I saw that everything in the area had been selling for 108% on average, 108% of list price. So we went over what that looked like for her and, and everything. And she said, well, I want to list at 250. She's like, right now, I think I can get it. I want to price at 250. And I know that the market's insane and that she could probably get it. So I said, okay. 
So we priced it at 250. In the first weekend, we had 34 offers. Several of them had waived the appraisal contingency, meaning that if the house did not appraise, they were willing to pay the difference between the appraised value and the sales price. So what that means is if we sell the house for 250 and the house appraises for 225, the bank is only going to lend based on the 225 number that the appraisal came back at. And they were willing to pay the extra 25,000. And of course we had to, you know, verify bank accounts and verify that they had the extra 20, the extra 25,000 to pay because we can't just go under contract and assume. And then people are like, I said I would, but I don't really have the money. That's happened before too, by the way. So we definitely verify funds and verify that they have the means to pay that if it comes to that. So we got 34 offers and we ended up selling the house for 275. Oh, I think it was 280. I can't remember. It's been a couple of months. So we sold the house for 280, 275. Let's go with 275 because I know for sure it was at least that, maybe more. So now, let's say in that same area, I have another seller who wants me to pull comps for them to list their house. So now the most recent sales are showing 275. Obviously, that's a completely different sales price than the original 225 that I offered, you know, that I, and of course, I never give anyone a number. I give them a range and I let them choose. But for her specifically, I think it was like 220 to 230 and I, and 225 was right in the middle. So a couple of months ago, I would have suggested between 220 and 230, but now my listing sold for 275 and the listing down the street had multiple offers and that one sold for, you know, well over asking. So now I'm pulling numbers and the prices are, you should list between 265 and 275 or maybe 270 and 280, somewhere around there. So I have the same conversation with that client. The, you know, the comps are supporting a sales price of 270 to 280, blah, blah, blah. And in your neighborhood, I see that everything's selling for 110% over now with multiple offers. So then that seller says, well, I don't want to list at 280. I want to list at 300. It's a seller's market and everyone's doing multiple offers and everything's going for 10% over asking. So I want to ask for 300, even though literally three months ago, I would have recommended this person listing at 225. But this month I'm saying you could probably get 280 based on today's market, which is insane. But you know, if you're a seller, you're gonna definitely take advantage of that. I know I would. So now you can sell it for 280. And she goes, well, no, I wanna sell for 300. Okay, so we, we list for 300. We're shooting for the moon, hoping we land on a star. Great, we listed at 300 and guess what? Multiple offers and that one sold for 315. Crazy. So now let's say hypothetically, I have another listing in the same area and I'm pulling comps and now comps are showing, you know, 315. And I'm gonna have the same conversation again. And of course that seller is gonna be greedy because let's be honest, when you're a seller, you're greedy. You want the most money for your house. I do, everyone I work with does. You might be the one perfect angel in the world that wants to be fair to the buyer. But if somebody told you you could be not fair to the buyer and make $20,000 more, I have a feeling you would probably want to do that because it's human nature to want more. I mean, we are all greedy in our own way. So <clears throat> buyers are also greedy, by the way. They want the best deal in the house. So it's always a fun game to try to get right in the middle where everyone's happy. So I have the same conversation with this seller, 315, everything's selling for over asking, multiple offers. And now this seller says, I want to try for 330. See where I'm going with this? That is what the last 18 months has looked like. And we as realtors have all had the conversation with our buyers like, hey, the market can't sustain this forever, guys. Like it can't. At this point, all of my first time home buyers from 2021 and 2022 had to lease houses. I mean, okay, not all of them. I would say half of them. Half of the people who came to me in the last 18 months and said, I wanna buy a house, Half of them had to rent because they just couldn't afford a house in today's market. I don't have a lot of buyers in the 250 to 300 price point that have 30,000 extra just in case it doesn't appraise for this crazy new price. And so we've all had to kind of work around that. And to be clear, again, the market just could not sustain that level of price increase. As fun as it was, we enjoyed it while we could. Now the interest rates have gone up things have slowed down a little bit. 
by all means, the sky is not falling, the world is not on fire, and real estate is not crashing. You know what's happening? Houses are still selling. But only the houses that are priced as they should be. So let's take all of those same examples. The first one, I would have originally told her to list between 220 and 230. She wanted a list for 250. Okay, we got 275. All right. So then the next one I said list around 275, and she's like, I want 300. Okay. And then she sold for over 300. So that kept happening. So sellers kept bumping up what they were asking for. Again, understandably so. <clears throat> you can't do that anymore. Not in today's market. So if your realtor comes to you and says, hey, I recommend pricing your house between 220 and 230. Listen, listen to your realtor. They know what they're talking about. Well, at least I hope you chose a good realtor. If you need a good realtor in your area, I know realtors nationwide. I'm part of an elite group. I talk to all of them. I network with all of them. So if you need a recommendation for your marketplace, just reach out to me and I will find you an A plus realtor where you're at. But you have to listen to your realtor because they're a professional. And if you're my accountant, I'm not gonna come to your office and I'm not gonna try to teach you how to file my taxes. I kind of feel like you already know how to do that. That's why I hired you. So if you hired a realtor, trust them, trust the process. I have clients that trust me and I have clients that don't. The average day on the market for the last 18 months was like between five and eight. It's gone up to 36. So the average days on the market right now are 36. And I will tell you seven of the last 10 houses I've pulled up have all had price reductions or price corrections or whatever words you wanna to use to make it sound not so bad. The truth of the matter is we've had to drop the prices, but that's not because we're in a horrible market. That's because the prices never should have been there to begin with. The sellers wanted more. And so no matter what number we gave them, they would bump it up and they would price it ridiculously. And we had no inventory and the buyers were so desperate that they would just pay whatever just to get in the house. And that worked for a while. I have a lot of happy buyers. They were just happy to get in their house, to have a house, to be a homeowner. I have a ton of happy sellers who made a killing. They bought the house four years ago, made you know 50,000, 100,000 off of it. That's great for them. People who have bought their houses in the last 18 months, and they even sold their house for a profit. So by all means, like I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying our market can only sustain it so long. So right now, while you're seeing these price decreases, it's not because the market is crashing and it's not because there's anything wrong with our market. The interest rates are not affecting us so much that people are not gonna buy houses. Everyone needs to live somewhere. Let's be honest, if you're renting a house, you're paying 100% interest to the landlord and you're paying off the landlord's interest, I mean the landlord's mortgage instead of your own. Now, if you're buying a house at 6% interest, yeah, that's worse than 3%. I totally get it, but is it bad? No, not at all, it's not a bad number. So don't think the world is falling. Don't think the market's crashing. Just think when a realtor said to list your house between 220 and 230, sellers were listing their houses at 250 and getting more than 250. And then when we were telling them to price at 280, they were pricing at 300 and getting more than 300. And that kept happening and it's not happening anymore. And I, for one, am very happy that it's not happening anymore because I have a ton of first time home buyers who would love to be in a home, deserve to be in a home. And I'm very excited that now it's their turn. They're gonna get to get a home this year and I'm very excited about that. But I just wanted to explain why you're seeing price reductions, price adjustments, price corrections, why you're seeing the houses on the market go from five to eight days average to 30 something days average. It's because the market is self-correcting. The market is getting priced where it should have been all along. And we are now in a market where we're normalizing, you know, and, and it's good to see. So if you have any questions on what the market is like where you live, feel free to reach out. I will get you in touch with an agent there. Or if you have any questions about Galveston County, Brazoria County and Harris County, I'm happy to help you. If it is an area of Houston I do not service, I have wonderful real estate friends all over Houston. I can get you in touch with one of them. 
Until next time, I'll see you on our next real estate road trip. I hope I was able to teach you a little bit about real estate pricing and I will see you soon. Bye.